Quint with polynomial path planning is one of the most common and easiest methods. So quintic polynomial is a fifth order. So you can get smooth position, velocity, and acceleration for each joint using a different fifth order polynomial. So one polynomial per joint. If only position and velocity are important, you can use a third order polynomial. And this is because with a fifth order polynomial, you can take six derivatives before it equals zero. And if you have position, velocity, acceleration at the start and the end, that is six different parameters. With a third order polynomial, you can take four possible derivatives. And then if you, so if you don't care about acceleration, you only need to know four parameters. The procedure for this is first to specify the initial and final position, velocity, acceleration, and time. Then take the derivatives. So the blanket formula for Q of T with Q being joint angle is just a fifth order polynomial with C for each coefficient. We don't know what those coefficients are. We will, we'll have to figure them out. But then if you take derivatives to get Q dot velocity and Q double dot acceleration, then you put all of those in matrix form TC equals Q, where T is the time, um, C is the coefficients, and Q is position, velocity, acceleration at start and end. So T will be a six by six, C will be a six by one, Q will be a six by one. Then you can solve C equals T inverse Q um, using either the inverse function on a calculator, if your calculator does matrix inverses, or you can do it in MATLAB using the language shown. This is really difficult to do by hand just because taking the inverse of a six by six matrix is kind of a monstrosity that you don't have to deal with. But you do need to be able to set it up completely and then just do the operation using a program or calculator. So let's do an example of this so that we can see how it works. If we're given that a robot joint moves from pi over three to seven pi over four radians over a period of four seconds, starting from rest and then stopping, find an appropriate quintic polynomial trajectory. So what trajectory of a fifth order polynomial would make the robot joint move from the start angle to the end angle, starting and ending at rest over four seconds? Well, first let's write down the procedure so that we can remind ourselves what order to do things in. Step one is to specify the boundary conditions. Step two is to take derivatives. Get velocity and acceleration. Step three is put in matrix form. And finally, solve. Let's see the coefficients so that we can put those into the trajectory and come up with the equation for Q of T. So step one is specify initial and final conditions. So let's make a table for that. We'll need to know initial and final position, velocity, acceleration, and time. So from um, pi over three to pi, seven pi over four radians. So pi over three would be the initial position and seven pi over four is the final position. Then if it starts and stops, starts from rest and stops, initial and final velocity must be zero. Now, velocity will not be zero during the whole trajectory because that would mean the robot's not moving, but it starts from rest and then it speeds up and then it ends at rest. And so the acceleration would also have to initially be zero and be zero at the end because the robot's not gonna go anywhere after that. Then finally time, we assume that if it's a period of four seconds, say it starts at time zero and ends at time four. 
now we have all of the parameters that we need. So next, let's write the Quintet polynomial equation and then take its derivatives. So Q of t equals C0 plus C1t plus C2 t squared plus C3 t cubed plus C4 t to the fourth power plus C5 t to the fifth power. We don't know what those c's are yet, but we'll find them out. So then we take the derivatives to get velocity and acceleration. Next, we need to put this in matrix form. So will be T C equals Q, where T is a six by six, C is a six by one, and Q is a six by one matrix. So T will have T We'll have the coefficients of the t variables in those equations. Then that will be multiplied by um, the c matrix, so that'd be c0, c1, dot, 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 all the way on to c5. And then that equals the q matrix, so that will have um, initial, position, velocity, acceleration, and then final. This is the basic form that it will take. So in order to determine what numbers actually go in here, we need to plug in the initial and final values of t into these equations for q, q dot, and q double dot. Then we can put those into matrices. In order to put these polynomials into matrix form, we need to figure out what their actual values are at the start and the end. So if we do Q of T, at the initial, we just need to plug in zero for T. So if all the T's are zero, then basically this just equals C zero. Now for Q dot, um, similarly, this would just equal C1. And Q double dot at zero is going to equal to C2. Now the ending one is obviously going to be really more complicated. So we plug in four, Q of four, and then Q dot of four, And then finally, Q double dot of four. Now we have all of the equations that we need to be able to fill out a matrix. So let's make a six by six matrix for the coefficients of C. So basically everything that's multiplied by a C in these equations We'll go in that big first matrix, and then we'll put all the C's here in the second one. So C0, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. And then this is going to equal, equal Q0, V0, A0, Q final, V final, A final. Um, now, all of these, Q, V, and A, initial and final, were given in the problem statement. So we can actually just replace all of those. The initial, we had 
pi over three, zero, zero. And then the final, we had seven pi over four, zero, zero. So now, in order to fill out this T matrix, we need to figure out what goes in all 36 of those locations. So the each row is go going to correspond to the Q, V, or A. So this will correspond to Q0, V0, A0, QF, VF, AF. And then each column corresponds to the C. C0, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. So now we just need to fill those out. So the, for the Q0 equation, whatever is multiplied by C0 would go in the first spot, and then whatever is multiplied by C1 in the second spot, and so on. Well, Q of zero is just C0, so that coefficient is one. There's one C0 there. Everything else is zeros. Now, initial velocity, Q dot of zero, is just C1. So we have a one in the C1 spot, and we have zeros everywhere else. Then Q double dot of zero is just two C2. So we'll have a two in the C2 column, and zeros everywhere else. Now the final one is obviously trickier, but all the coefficients are easily visible. So C1, there's just one of those, we put a one. Then the C1 has a coefficient of four. The C2 has a coefficient of 16, and then 64, 256, 1024. So Q dot and Q double dot um, for the final, we will fill out similarly. Zero because there's no C zero in the Q dot equation. One C one, eight C two, and so on. So now that we have these filled out, we'll write the form up here. T times C equals Q, we need to solve this and figure out what those coefficients are. C equals T inverse Q. So you can do that in a calculator or you can do it in MATLAB. So let's look at MATLAB. So here you can see I have input um, all of the boundary conditions as well as the time, fill out the matrices, and then write the equation. So we run it, and we get the C matrix right here. So this is the coefficient, or that's what C0 equals. And then C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5. So those are the coefficients that would go into the polynomial trajectory. So this is the answer for the quintic polynomial trajectory that would yield these boundary conditions. So let's look at a simulation of this in MATLAB. All right, so we can see position, velocity, and acceleration um, all plotted here. They're all smooth and curvy, which makes sense for position being a quintic polynomial and then velocity being a fourth order, acceleration being a third order. And then if we verify the boundary conditions, time on the x-axis here goes from zero to four seconds. That is correct. Um, position goes from a little bit over one, which is pi over three is close to one, um, up to five and a half, which is basically seven pi over three 
Um, and, and you can see that velocity and acceleration both start at zero and end at zero, but are not zero the whole time. So this passes the reality check. C1 and C2 both ended up to be zero. This is actually always going to be the case if initial velocity and, and acceleration and final velocity and acceleration are both zero. So if you have final and initial velocity and acceleration both being zero, then C1 and C2 will always be zero. There are also some shortcut formulas that can be solved by hand for this special case. So these formulas are what you can use to solve the special case of zero velocity acceleration at the beginning and the end. Now, pros of quantic polynomials, they reduce noise and vibration because every position velocity acceleration are all smooth. They have fewer singularities and fewer solutions to the inverse kinematics problem because you're specifying so much everything for the joints. The cons are that you have to solve a lot of polynomials for closed spacing. So you would need one polynomial for each joint for each section of the path that you want to go through. So from first point to second point, you have one polynomial. Second point to third point, you have another polynomial, and so on. And you need to get all those polynomials close enough together, otherwise your robot could, you know, suddenly move a joint like completely 180 degrees that you weren't expecting or something like that. And then you also have to actually know what the starting and ending velocities and accelerations are. So those are things that you would have to specify for your particular situation. <laughs>